All right. Uh, thanks everyone for joining today. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Microsoft Audience Network and some of the tips, tricks, and tools that you can use to be successful for your audience campaign campaigns within the audience um, advertising platform. Uh, just to introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Lance Wilson. I'm a native sales rep uh, and have been working on this product now for about three years, and I've been at Microsoft for um, almost eight. Uh, and, and have been working uh, with this product for a while. So I just wanted to take this time to go through kind of what these tips and tricks are for your audience campaigns um, that, that you're running. Because um, uh, if you're on this call, that means you have created some audience campaigns. And so I want to help you out as far as understanding what it is um, and how to make it work. So what is the Microsoft Audience Network? And so these are targeted ads that are uh, that that are in place of users that are interested in these ads. They're on places like MSN.com and Outlook as well. And we use um, intent signals to target our users on these placements that we have. Um, it's a way for advertisers to place ads that are highly relevant uh, in front of their audience, in front of their customers. Now, how do we how do we do this? How do we get um, this, these intent signals. Well, at Microsoft, we have billions of data points, um, signals uh, that we use combined with first party signals from um, from advertisers. And then we combine that together to then be able to target our users. Think about like the browser behavior that we have from Edge, from search intent, from Bing, and then also LinkedIn profile data. We can use all of these different signals to then bucket our users and bucket, bucket our audiences and make sure that um, you are targeting the right audience. Now, some things that are really important as far as like some, some tips uh, to make these campaigns as successful as possible is to make sure that you're setting um, optimal bids. Um, once you've set up your campaigns, you want to make sure that you're reviewing what your bids are at. The bids are placed at the ad group level, um, and we have a tool uh, that you're able to use at the ad group level where you can actually select the um, uh, the bid landscape tool, it's called, in this pop out here. And you can select it and get an idea of, hey, is your bid in the right place? And so that's kind of always one of the best places to go right out the gate once you launch your campaigns to say, hey, is there more opportunity out there? Um, what does my bid need to be um, to reach that that opportunity um, and you can obviously play with those bids to see kind of where the sweet spot is. Um, I will say through experience, you don't need a lot of time. Uh, sorry, you don't need to change the bid very frequently um, because the, the, the bids, um, uh, you know, they just don't need to be changed as much. And then also those bids, your CPCs are actually going to come in a lot less than what your bid is. So don't be hesitant to start with a higher bid than than you might feel comfortable with. And like I said, that's because the CPC is going to be about 40% less, less than whatever your bid is. Another thing that's really important with the Microsoft Audience Network are your images. You want to make sure that you're choosing the best images possible. Uh, you only need one image size when you launch, and that's the uh, 1200 by 628 image size. And once you add that image size, then we're going to repurpose that image to fit the other placements that are available on our network. Um, you can also um, you can import your assets from Google, uh, from Facebook, Pinterest, et cetera. If you want to bring those images in as well, you could do, use our import feature. Um, you can also um, import them from uh, your own website. As you upload or as you get to the stage of adding assets, you can select how you want to do that. You can do it from your own website, like here. It says a website images, or upload from your device, or then even use our stock images um, if you don't have like a creative theme or specific branding that you want to use. Um, you want to select lifestyle imagery. You want to make sure that there um, is no text or really like brand or anything in the image itself, just because of our text overlay. And I'll show you what that looks like real quick. Um, and you also want to make sure that you're refreshing your images. You don't want your images to get stale um, because performance will decrease over time. So you want to make sure that you're constantly changing what those images are. Now, when you review your images, so once you upload those images, whether that's an upload from your website or an import, whatever it may be, you can review what that's going to look like here. Now, I mentioned not having text in it or or brands or, or sorry, yeah, yeah, logos in it, because we have a text overlay that's going to that uh, that will show up. Uh, and if you have text on your image or the logo, it's going to get messy. And it's not going to look very good. Um, now, review your images because we do have the cropping feature where you can recrop how the image comes out in that certain aspect ratio. 
and you can either select a new image or you can crop it into a different place. Um, and so this scrolling here will allow you to see each placement and how it appears or how it will appear in that ad placement slot. And as you update kind of the headline, the ad text, et cetera, that's going to update in real time here. So you can see exactly what that's going to look like. So pretty useful tool. It's really important. I have, I can't tell you, this is probably not number one, number two optimization that I give where advertisers do not review their images and their images just look poor um, and, and, and cluttered. And so this is really important to review your images. So how do you, uh, advertise to your audience or how, how do you get these ads in front of the audiences? So um, obviously you can use our Microsoft data um, and then also combine that with your first party data. So your first party data is going to be your remarketing list. It's going to be your custom audiences or customer match lists. And then the Microsoft data that you're able to utilize are our in-market audiences, uh, LinkedIn profile targeting, which would be a company uh, industry and job function that you can utilize and target those specific um, things. And LinkedIn's awesome, it's great profile targeting that we have available. And you know, other than us and LinkedIn, there's no one else that has access to that targeting. Uh, and then there's also um, similar audiences. Now, those similar audiences, Microsoft is creating them. You have them in your UI, but you're only going to have them if you have a marketing list because we're building those similar audiences off or lookalikes. We're building those off of your marketing lists. Uh, so we'll go into that real quick uh, or a little bit later about like UET and adding conversion tracking. Um, but that's why it's really important to add conversion tracking, create remarketing lists that are based on, hey, visitors or visitors of a page or card abandoners, et cetera. And then we can build similar audiences. And I'll tell you, similar audience is a very effective audience to target. It's great to expand and do branding awareness or get new customers to come to your site, um, but also in, a, in an effective way. Um, so obviously remarketing works really well, but similar audiences um, also works really well. So I really, I highly recommend it. Now, when you create your campaigns, when you structure your campaigns, it's really important that you have these audience types separated out by campaign, or I should say each campaign should be in, like should only have one audience type in it. And so this simple example here, the top two campaigns are the most efficient campaigns that you can have in your your um, account is one have a remarketing campaign and then two would be an in-market audience campaign now the remarketing campaign would only have your remarketing list in it that would be the only audiences that that campaign would be targeting it wouldn't be targeting anything else uh, so and you don't want to mix it in with a similar audience or an in-market audience you want to keep it just in remarketing and there's a couple of reasons for that one of the biggest reasons is budget reasons if you're mixing in audiences one of those audiences is going to take the, the majority of the budget. And the second reason is also, uh, it, it performs from like a quality score perspective. It's not as important. The budgeting is the most important piece, but it's just really important to keep it clean and keep audience types in their own campaigns. So that's why you have in this example here, just, hey, if I have two campaigns, one's gonna be remarketing and one's gonna be in-market audiences only. Um, you know, if you were had multiple campaigns, you would then, uh, you know, if it was similar audience, et cetera, you'd have additional campaigns. Um, and then also the tiered bids. So you're gonna end, you're gonna end up bidding um, a little bit more, you know, for those audiences that are a little more relevant. So for example, in the remarketing is probably gonna have um, a higher bid, and then you have a lower bid for your in-market audiences, and just because those, um, you know, the volume or sorry, the the marketplace of that you can target is gonna be a lot larger in the in-market audiences than they are gonna be remarketing, and so remarketing would be a little more competitive. So just make sure that those those bids are tiered. Um, but that bid landscape tool is a great um, resource to use to to kind of get an idea of um, where your bits should be. Now, if you want to check, you know, maybe you did an import or maybe you've launched or maybe someone else launched and you don't know what it looks like or how it's working. So if you want to check and verify like, hey, what audiences am I targeting? Uh, it's really easy to go to. So you, just in your UI, this is a screenshot of what the UI would look like. You're going to go into the campaign section uh, and then you want to go to, you can, you can stay in the campaigns or go to ad groups, but you want to select this audiences piece. Um, and then you would see what audiences are associated. And it's also important to verify that they're on target and bid. Because if they're on bid only, that means you're available to run everywhere or you're on run of network. And so you want to make sure that, hey, if I have a remarketing list that I'm targeting or an in-market audience for this campaign, that it's labeled as target and bid. Um, and and you, you'll see the targeting sitting right here. It would say target and bid or it would say bid only. And you want to be on target and bid. 
Um, and then the other piece just to mention here, so this was where all the audiences would live, but if you're doing LinkedIn, they would not be here. You would need to navigate to the demographics tab. And in the demographics tab, that's where you would find the LinkedIn profile targets, company, job function, and industry. And if you're in the B2B business um, or, or if you're in B2B sales, LinkedIn, you definitely want to be using that um, really good volume um, and, and, you know, really good targeting options there. All right, so I went through a little bit of, you know, the audiences that you can target, the LinkedIn targeting that you can use, um, then you have the ability to target and adjust how you want. So you obviously can do um, gender, age, device, and then location, obviously, and then day parting. It, um, you can utilize a mix and match all of these and then do bid bo boost for any of these. So if you know you perform better, um, you know, get better conversions, et cetera, or you're targeting a specific uh, uh, persona, you can utilize this to make sure that you're targeting the right, um, the right person. I would just emphasize in, you can also pull these reports and to always check your device performance to see if you need to make some adjustments there. I do see some uh, advertisers where um, if they adjusted some of their bid, bid adjustments between PC and mobile, they could see some better performance. So always check and do a, you can pull reports really easy to do, or you can just pull a, uh, a pull down your segment by device in the UI itself. So you can see that performance and then get an idea of like, hey, what adjustments do I need to make? Um, so definitely be reviewing these because you can make those bid adjustments and that will easily improve the performance of your campaigns. Okay, so now that we talked about the remarketing piece, there, I mentioned before that we would talk about the, the UET or conversion tracking. Um, so this is how you would get that remarketing audience conversion tracking, and then also those similar audiences that perform so well. So you want to set up those, set up that tracking. So you just need to create a UET tag. Once you create that UET tag, uh, you can copy it, download it, et cetera, and then you add that tag to your site. You know, and if you're using like a Google Tag Manager or, or, or another tag manager, it's really easy just to put that in. Um, and you would want that on all pages uh, of your website. So then we could, you could create different remarketing lists. Uh, having all pages. Uh, yeah, and, and you can also obviously just like verify and, and we have a UET tag helper where you're able to, as, as it says here, leverage our UET tag helper, helper to then see, okay, hey, is this firing correctly or not? And then you can review and, and kind of fix it, et cetera. Um, you can do custom events. You could do um, uh, conversion tracking, but, but revenue tracking. So, so um, to track, hey, every conversion is worth a certain value, or if it is a variable revenue, you can track that. And then it's really useful dynamic marketing. So if you're super advanced and you want to do it, dynamic marketing is awesome and is our best performing audience to utilize. Um, but but it's primarily used for retail. Uh, but there are other uses for it, but dynamic marketing is really good. Anyway, so there, there's a lot of help sections for this on how to get your UET tag on. Uh, onto your site, and so highly recommend it. And that's once again how you get remarketing lists, how you get similar audiences, how you get conversion tracking. It's just really important for the health and performance of your campaigns. All right, so you have your campaign set up, you have your audience set up, you you reviewed. Hey, how do my ads look? Is my bid in the right spot? Are my audiences set up correctly? So that checklist, you know, there's not, there's really not that large of a checklist. You have four or five things that you need to check. Once you have that done, you know, let your campaigns breathe. Give them some time to perform. Let the algorithm learn and say, hey, what ads are we? Let's make sure our ads are getting in front of the right people. Um, people and the customers so that we can get better performance. And so wait um, a couple of weeks until you start evaluating and optimizing and say, okay, after a couple of weeks, let's adjust these bids. Let's adjust these bid segment or bid boosts. Let's add some exclusions from our publishers, et cetera. Um, and then also you want to keep, remember, you got to refresh those assets because they will get stale. You will see performance dip if you do not refresh um, those assets that you have. So make sure you're constantly setting with those new ads. However, caveat, don't pause all your ads and then add them. You need to keep those live ones live, add them, and then pause once the new ones have been approved and are starting to get clicks and impressions. So what should you do now? You know, th this is, these are just some really easy, easy, actionable steps to take. Um, you know, make sure you have UET tags. 
Um, get UET on your site. It's really easy. Once again, if you have a tag manager, um, it's super, super easy to do. That way, then you can set conversion tracking. You can create remarketing lists and then get similar audiences. And then really, and you know, obviously those audiences, remarketing and similar audiences, you're going to be able to use for your search, search campaigns as well. So it's just really, really useful um, to have that information. Uh, and then check your bids, check that landscape tool, make sure your bids are in a healthy spot um, and that, you're getting, that you can get the volume um, that's out there. And then make sure you're adding your images, adding new images, and then you're reviewing them and making sure that it's relevant and that it looks clean. Um, there, there's plenty of examples out there that you could look at and say, hey, this, this is what a good image looks like. Um, and then review those audience targeting that you have. That screenshot that I had of what the UI looks like, make sure you're reviewing uh, that tab. Make sure you're saying you're looking at it and saying, okay, are all the audiences that are in here are they the same? Because if they're different, it's not a best practice, and then you need you need to create a different campaign uh, because you're just not going to get optimal performance. So those those are the the really the, it's really simple, really quick, some actionable things that you can do right now uh, to make your campaign start to perform um, well and better. Um, and so that's all I had today. So we'll jump, I think, now into the Q&A. And we're not actually seeing any questions from the group here. So I think we can close this one out. You want to wrap us up, Lance? Yeah. So uh, once again, some easy things to do with uh, your campaigns. Make sure you're reviewing those things. Um, there's a lot of help articles out there as well. Um, and, and yeah, review the, the slides here. I'm sure they'll be available. Um, and thanks for your time, everyone. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone.